Welcome to Fresh Off The Set. I'm Carrie Hawker-Diaz. And I'm David Osman. Okay, I'm so excited for this podcast today because I was just thinking about it. Time flies when you get married. Like, I, we just celebrated... 11 years this year. How long have you been married? We've been married 17 years. Wow. So yeah, we're we're coming up on knowing each other for 20 years this next year. It's like, it's mind blowing. In fact, a friend just sent me a text a few minutes ago of like, just our kids when they were just babies. That was only 10 years ago, but it's like, oh my gosh, where is this time going? So yeah, you look back and it's like, wow, we... We've been a long, long time together. Oh, I don't have to pay it's, royalties on this. But <laughs> you you only got a snippet, a snippet <laughs> yeah. of the song. But it's, it's crazy how fast it goes. And Utah is like, a, I mean, so many people get married here and come into the state and get married. Yeah. And uh, it's such a beautiful state. Um, and so I sat down with Brittany Hart from Utah Valley Bride Magazine, which that company is more than just the magazine. Um, they have like a course coming out that I will tell you about if you give this a listen. And there's a lot going on for them. When it comes to the wedding. I mean, do you, me- you remember the wedding day that was yesterday, 11 years ago? Like it's how crazy. your day was and all the details? You know, I remember it goes so fast. I remember people yeah. saying, just enjoy it because it's going to fly. And it does. I mean, it's like a, it's just a few hours and it's gone. And you're like, what? We, did, we just paid for what? Like, yeah. Honestly, like here's Thousands. my here's my crash course. Elope. <laughs> Just take the money and run no, to honestly, Utah. Because to yeah, come here, it, it was it was an awesome day. In fact, my wife was on the color of Utah Valley Bride when we were uh, married back. You know, oh, she was on the cover of the yeah, magazine. She was, yeah, and it was fun to be able to showcase her, and then of course all the details of flowers and dress and everything that goes into it. I'm glad I'm a dude in this situation because I just had you know, just kind of nod my head and said, yes, it looks great. Yes, it looks great. <laughs> but it is a stressful time. It is. And to you put know it what? all together. Utah Valley everybody. Bride, yeah, they have so many tools and yeah. and uh, things to help you plan for your special day. And I mentioned the course. They have a wedding planning course coming up that they're going to talk about, which is so cool. And, and Brittany Hart, she's taken over there, uh, filling it, took the big shoes to fill at Jeanette Bennett, but she's doing awesome. She's the girl to do it. So it's cool to get her insight on on the next phase of what Utah Valley is doing. Has to offer well. Should we give it a listen? Let's do it. Okay. I am so excited to chat with Brittany today with Utah Valley Bride. Brittany, thanks for joining me. I'm excited to be here. Oh, we're excited to chat with you. Okay, let's start with just give us an introduction to Utah Valley Bride. Okay, this is this is so fun. Utah Valley Bride is such a, a vibrant, fun company. Uh, we have multiple platforms. Most people know us for the magazine that we produce once a year. Yes, and that's for, with like the best weddings in Utah. Really, it's it's a journalism piece just to feature the brides and grooms and couples here in Utah that are just having beautiful weddings. We get to feature their love stories and things like that. So that's a really fun platform. We also have a website with you know, 20 plus years of SEO and we feature weddings on there as well, as well as a resource of some of our preferred vendors here in Utah. So as couples are looking for their vendor teams for their wedding, they can find resources on our website. We also have an Instagram account again, where we feature the best of the best. Um, our, our, purpose is to feature beautiful weddings and provide inspiration for local couples, um, kind of to be the the Pinterest board, but the local version of it. So that when couples get married and they have these big dreams and then they say, how do we actually make this happen for our <laughs> wedding? They can come to us and find local vendors who have actually done those things. And then they can be connected with those vendors, find those resources and start planning their weddings. Um, and then of course, technically we're a media company. So local vendors can purchase advertising across any of those platforms so that they can be seen by these these couples that are trying to plan their weddings that's so amazing i mean here in utah we have so many incredible phenomenal weddings and a lot of people get married here and i think we're known for that so that's so fun that you get to showcase and help show those off and help those people you know guide guide them through their journey through planning Mm -hmm. their wedding tell us about who you are and can you share a little bit about your background Yes. So my background is weddings, weddings, weddings. I can't get out of it. <laughs> Just meant, um, meant to be. I, yes. I, I started as a bridal consultant. So I started selling wedding dresses and did that for a few years. I, I was, it was so much fun. Loved that. Fell in love with the industry. And um, I had been doing photography a part-time for a while and eventually went full-time. I about a decade career as a wedding photographer, getting to travel the world, um, but spending a lot of time here in Utah with the the vendors here and the couples here. And I just have fallen in love with this specific niche of weddings. Utah is very unique when it comes to weddings. The the culture here is a little different, but there's something very 
um, booming about this, the, the culture in Utah, the economy here. And because of that, there are a lot of wedding vendors in Utah mm-hmm. compared to and so it's a really interesting community of vendors and they have become my best friends. Like we have been kind of coworkers for the last decade and I just love these people. So, uh, so I am not doing wedding photography anymore and being involved in Utah Valley Bride is, is the next phase of my involvement in the wedding industry here. Wow. You were just surrounded and you must love it to have been, I mean, you've done it for so long and what, tell us what inspired you to take over Utah Valley Bride. Yeah, so so wedding photography felt like that season was done. And I had been aware of that for about a year and a half, but hadn't really decided to be done with wedding photography yet. Um, and around that same time, the previous owner and the founder of Utah Valley Bride was looking to sell the company. She, This is Jeanette Bennett. Um, she's oh, the yeah, yes. Of- I love her. I've met her in... Yeah. She's been, yeah, love her. Yeah, she's, she's amazing and very, very accomplished. Um, Bennett Communications is the company that founded Utah Valley Bride and lots and lots of other magazines. And they were producing many, many magazines every year, like up to 30, I believe. And uh, Utah Valley Bride was the only wedding magazine there. Um, and they felt like it just needed a little more attention. And also Jeanette was at the same time having lots of other really amazing opportunities that she needed to put her brain space into. And so it just made sense. It was the right timing for them to kind of hand this off to someone else who knew the industry well. And it was the right timing for, for me to kind of step in and, and do that. And put wedding photography away and step into this space instead. And when is that that you stepped stepped over? This was end of last year. End of last yeah. year. Okay. And what yep. like what types of content can readers expect to see under your leadership? Like have you changed things? Are you planning on changing things? What's your vision? Yeah, so I mentioned the different platforms that we have across social media and our website um, as far as blogs and and features there. In addition to the annual magazine, we're going to keep all of those. Um, We are ramping up the number of weddings that we feature every year. So there's going to be more inspiration, uh, more features, more shout outs to brides and grooms, more shout outs to different vendors. Um, What we're trying to do is feature a really beautiful range of couples because a lot of the time we think of young couples getting married for the first time, but there's a lot of second weddings happening Mm -hmm. here in Utah. I just heard about this couple. It makes me so happy. They met in high school and they were sweethearts in high school and they have all these little cute notes and letters to each other. They ended up separating and marrying other people. And now in their sixties, they've found each other and gotten married to each other. Okay. That's so cute. Fun, fun stories like that. There's there's such a range of of like really rich, beautiful stories here in Utah. And um, our goal is to feature more of those. I love that. Well, that kind of leads into my next question, I guess. Are there any specific demographics you're aiming to reach with your content? And I mean, you're kind of mentioning everyone. Yeah. So of course we're, we are a local Utah magazine. So our demographic is anyone in Utah that's getting married, but also anyone who's coming to Utah to get married. We have a lot of beautiful locations here in Utah that are very unique from the salt flats to park city to the red rocks down South. We've got really kind of unusual variety here in Utah. So there's a lot of destination weddings coming in and those couples need to find vendors that are based here in Utah as well. Sure. Oh, it's so beautiful to get married here in Utah. We have so many options. It is just the most stunning place in my opinion. Um, Mm -hmm. So it's so fun to see people coming out of town to come here to tie the knot. Um, How do you plan to enhance the magazine's digital presence? Speaking of the magazine. Mm -hmm. So the magazine, that's so interesting because it obviously is a physical printed magazine. We're going to keep it that way because there's something really cool about having it kind of like it's almost like a flashback when people used to cut out the pictures of the magazine and put it together yes in board, right? yes and we hear stories about couples who are actually still doing this right so there's it's really fun to have a physical magazine um but it also it just fills a different need as far as the way that people do their research for their weddings um but in order to to expand our digital presence across the company um on our website, we do have, I mean, even on our, our social media, on all the platforms we have, we have a really good track record of SEO um, because we've been doing this for 20 plus years. And so there's really, really great history of all the content 
content there, but we are planning to expand networks into other social media platforms. So that's something that we're already working on and that's that we're going to come out um, and do a little bit more a little more talking about that in the next handful of months. Um, but really the, just the more content we produce, the more our digital footprint expands and we produce a lot. <laughs> like we, we post a lot of content and we're trying so hard to keep up with all of the great stuff that is sent into us. We get hundreds and hundreds of submissions from gorgeous weddings and we're trying to get them all featured. <laughs> That's so cool. Okay. You mentioned SEO for listeners who aren't yeah. familiar. Can you explain what that is? Yes. Yeah, so, so SEO is usually referring to the Google search engine, just meaning that on our website, we have a really good track record of using the right keywords and showing Google that we are a legitimate company, which means that when vendors search for anything that is listed on our website, whether that's preferred vendors or um, wedding education or things like that, our website is going to come up really quickly, which is great for vendors who are paying for advertising, but it's also great for couples who are searching for resources. Sure. That's amazing. Okay. And you mentioned social media a little bit with how crazy it is now. And that's how everyone is advertising. What role do you see social media playing in your strategy for Utah Valley Bride? I I would say the most important thing is featuring all of these couples. That's our, that's our main priority. It's just providing so much inspiration and beautiful content so that the couples that are getting married next have really good resources and, and inspiration to see like, Oh, this is the thing I've always dreamed of. I actually can do that in Utah. Yeah. And here's the team of vendors that made it happen for this other couple. Right. So I think that's our, our main goal is to continue providing relevant resources in the form of inspiration. Um, but also, and, and just like you referred to social media is key right now. Mm-hmm. And it's interesting here in Utah. Well, not even in Utah, just in general, in the wedding industry, vendors and couples only meet each other at an event. Most, most vendors uh, work from home or they work from their studio and they show up at the event. True. So the, the best way for people to meet each other or to kind of interview each other and see if they're a good fit to work together is on social media. And so what we're doing is we're trying to create a, a really good community and build, foster a place where people can connect and communicate with each other. Okay, so cool. And you mentioned a little bit about featuring local brides. If there's a bride listening and they really want to be featured, mm-hmm. they're thinking, okay, I know my wedding's going to be top notch, my photography, my cake, my venue, mm-hmm. and they want, is there a secret? How do we get featured, Brittany, if someone's thinking, I want to be featured? Mm, the great, great question. Okay, so the first thing to do is talk to your vendor team. So if they have a wedding photographer, or a wedding planner, those those are the two main vendors who are going to know how to get featured. So if you've already hired those people, talk to them and get their advice because they know more about your wedding than we do and they can give you specific suggestions on that. And specifically what we look for is things that are inspirational, beautiful, things that make people go, wow, that was, that's gorgeous. Um, and we do that, we specifically look for that in things that are personal. So mm. instead of just a kind of a copy and paste wedding, um, include something that's really unique to your experience. Or um, if you have a dog, include dog treats as party favors for your guests. Cute. Or cute things like that that make it feel very, very you specific. Um, that's really on trend right now. And it's so fun to include those details in love stories. So those are the, the two main things that we're looking for. And it's, if you already have your wedding pictures back, photos or videos, you can submit those on our website and those go through our submission process where we, we go through them and just make sure we have all the vendors tagged and make sure it's the kind of content we're looking for and then we can feature it. Cool. Okay. Thanks for that. Um, do you have any plans or collaborations or partnerships with local businesses or influencers? And, you know, do you see yourself doing those a lot? Yeah. I mean, that's the whole business model. Collaborating with vendors yeah. is the entire business. Um, I would say about half of the content that we feature across all of our platforms is free content that comes in through submissions. So photographers or brides or or whomever will submit their weddings because they're gorgeous and they want to get featured. And most of the time we, we agree and we feature those for free and just give shout outs. Honestly, we kind of take the personality of the the fan girl and we're just like, look at all these amazing (laughs) weddings. 
fun vendors. Um, so that's about half the content we, we produce. The other half is when we partner with vendors who want to advertise on our platforms. And so, so I would say collaboration with vendors is the entire, this is the entire wedding industry. That's what it's built on. Okay. Speaking of the industry, what do you see as the biggest challenges facing the wedding industry here in Utah? Hmm. In the past, the biggest challenge has been that Utah is usually two years behind on trends. Interesting. Two years. Is, yes. Usually, um, usually Europe has the trend and then New York grabs it and then Utah comes in last. Two years later. Okay. <laughs> uh, but that is changing. I, I think mass media and, and just easier access to, to media has mm-hmm. been changing. And Utah brides are, are starting to push the, the trend boundary a little bit, kind of set, set a new tone here for the culture of weddings in Utah. And that has been really fun for us to watch. So I would say that's a smaller challenge now than it was in the past. And we're just, you know, kudos to all of the, the brides and grooms who are choosing to be extra stylish and set some trends. That's really fun. Um, I would say the, the biggest concern or the biggest challenge that couples who are planning their weddings right now are looking at is that the average cost of a wedding has increased significantly in the last handful of years. Mm-hmm. And I people recognize that, um, especially, especially in a situation where parents are helping to cover the cost of the weddings and things like that. A lot of people are surprised by the investment and then that adds a lot of stress um, and then they don't know the steps to, you know, prioritize or allocate their funds to certain things. And um, planning a wedding is like a full-time job when you have never done any research into it. Yeah. So, that's the, the struggle that we're seeing with a lot of couples right now, just that it's a little overwhelming when, they, when they're when they educated about how to do the wedding. Um, so we've created a wedding planning course that walks through all of that, sets expectations, and gives some step-by-step um, steps, especially in the budget category, to help alleviate that stress. Sure. Okay. And you mentioned that we're sometimes two years behind on wedding trends, which Mm -hmm. makes sense if it's coming over from Europe. Are you seeing anything for 2024 into 2025 wedding trends for this year into next year? Yeah, this year it's all about bows. It's it's kind of frilly. Bows, Mm -hmm. uh, lots of pink, lots and lots of pink. I think the Barbie movie influenced that. Mm -hmm. Uh, I I don't know if that's going to follow into next year but what I am seeing a lot of this year is floral it seems like a lot of people are investing their budget into beautiful floral um which is beautiful on camera of course Mm -hmm. but it's more beautiful in person so it seems like couples are leaning towards the in-person experience and putting more of their budget into creating an experience for the guests almost like a almost to honor them for being there to support them. And in some cases, that means that they're keeping their guest list a little bit smaller so they can spend like per person a little bit more um, per plated meal or per floral per person. Sure, make it more of an experience that they want, which is a smaller list. Yeah, smart. Um, Brittany, how do you stay informed and inspired by industry trends? Are you just continually watching Europe or how how do you stay informed and inspired? Mm-hmm. Uh, we stock everything. We stock the <laughs> We're everywhere. Um, our team, obviously, that's fun for us to do. We we just get to scroll through weddings all day. Um, but what we're looking for with trends are new things that we see continually. So, um, so like one person that wears a, a fun new fabric, that's a really fun statement. But if we start seeing that fabric or that that um, shape of dress or that type of coloring or something like that multiple times, then we make a note of that. And, um, and usually around the time that we see that there's uh, like a month or two later, there's a bride or groom who submits that same style of wedding because they also saw it and they implemented it quickly. We have, I think the generation that's coming into the wedding space right now, uh, the brides and grooms, they are excited to push industry trends and just their fashion sense is a little bit more daring and so uh, so that's part of why the trends are being picked up a little bit faster but but yeah it is it's really fun to watch oh for sure I can only imagine like being in the industry it's fun for me as like an outsider just to see like uh-huh. oh this wedding looks so cool I can only imagine what you guys go through and what you get to see that's so fun um what advice would you give to brides and grooms listening right now and they're planning their weddings in Utah 
I know that's like an open book, but is there just a couple yeah. things that you would want to say to them? Yes, I think that there's a few steps that would be quite important to have before you actually dive into researching and, and hiring vendors and things like that. Um, it all comes down to education and communication. So I would say before even, even bringing in other people's opinions or talking to family members, I think the couple should have a good discussion on what type of event they want to throw. Um, maybe the two of them really just want a small event, but if they don't have the chance to talk about that, they may be swayed into a really large event because their parents want that mm. or that type of in understanding what type of event they want, what their priorities are. Um, then the next step would be for each of them to outline their priorities and um, specifically specifically in experience or vendor type. So for example, a bride might prioritize her flowers, her dress, and her hair and makeup. Or the groom might say, I want really good food and I want to make sure I have time that morning to hang out with my, my groomsmen without feeling stressed or things like that. So once they understand their three priorities, then they can, um, they can plan the entire wedding day around that. The next step would be finding out a real realistic budget of how much that type of event is going to be how much they need to invest into that. Um, this is where a wedding planner comes in really handy because they could tell you immediately without having to do research on that, give you really good resources there. Um, and then the next step is to determine based on that budget, based on your goals, which vendors you're going to hire. And then if you want to DIY some of your own projects, determining which projects would be applicable for DIY because some some things like catering probably shouldn't be mm -hmm. DIY yeah. regulations and food safety. Like like there's some legal things with that, you know. So I think those would be the steps to start with before you start hiring vendors. That's really good advice. Thank you. That's those are awesome steps and very important to take it first. And what else would help is a wedding planning course, which you're launching. Yeah. Tell us more about that. Oh, we're so excited. Okay. This has been in the works for a long time, a long time. It has turned into a much, a much more hefty course than we expected it to be, um, which is why it has taken a long time and it's going to be totally worth it. So this is going to be available on our website later this month. This is applicable for uh, local brides and grooms and out of state couples. If they're, you know, if they're coming in for a destination wedding, um, overall, the content is really helpful for anybody planning a wedding in state or out of state. Um, but we've given specific recommendations for Utah weddings that are, that are very relevant here. Um, having a wedding planner for your wedding is so, so helpful. Mm -hmm. Also, it is an investment. So there are some couples who would prefer to use their, their budget elsewhere. And there are just some couples who are really excited to plan their weddings by themselves. However, Nobody actually knows how to plan a wedding until they've gone through the process and figured it out the painful way. So our course is intended to give step-by-step -step instructions in the correct order to teach people how to organize and coordinate details that nobody would ever think of, but that will avoid stress for couples and family members later on. So, um, so it's, it's pretty in-depth. We even have a section that coaches couples through how to have the budget discussion with their family members, which is often one of the mm. most important parts of the wedding planning experience um, and can cause some tension between family members. So we're trying to, to alleviate a lot of those things. Uh, a wedding planner here in Utah, Cache and Co. Events. She's a professional wedding planner. She's amazing. Um, she put this course together and co-branded it with us. It's so in-depth. There's over 40 videos walking through everything from, um, like I mentioned, budgeting, um, the, the DIY successes and dangers, like how to not have Pinterest fail a wedding, mm -hmm. <laughs> how to make a guest list, um, timeline, really in-depth suggestions on timeline and things to, to plan into your day so that it's not stressful. And based on vendor categories, even like how to choose your vendors, things to consider with pros and cons of, of different styles of hair and makeup. And like, there's so much in here, including spreadsheets with your budget calculators and uh, like a workbook that they can print out and fill in as they're learning and, and going through their steps. So there's, there's a lot in here. Um, this is going to be a digital course that can be purchased and then implemented immediately. And I think 
I think it's going to alleviate a lot of stress. And also um, planning a wedding usually takes about 400 hours and people don't know that <laughs> until they dive into it. And I think this is going to direct all of that energy into the, the correct things so that planning a wedding is less stressful and and more like a like a team building exercise which is what it really should be when you're walking into the season of marriage. Oh, that's such good advice. Oh, that's so good. The wedding planning course, so true. Have the professionals help you through the most important day of your life. And, you know, when it really comes down to it, it's about that love and, you know, marrying the person that you love most in your life, being surrounded mm-hmm. by friends and family. And speaking of love, what do you love most about working in the wedding industry, Brittany? I think my favorite part of the wedding industry is the, this maybe sounds a little cheesy, but the, the loving atmosphere kind of charges the energy. There's, mm. a, and the cool thing from a vendor perspective, when we're working on a project for clients, we're working with a bride and interviewing them and, and hearing about how it all went, there's this energy around the project that is just kind of buzzy and, and exciting because it is all about their love story like it it is just honoring them and I think witnessing that the love story but also witnessing how the couples choose to present that and share it with their loved ones is really beautiful and then it's also amazing just to watch those vendors we're all friends with each other it's really fun to watch our community come together and really bend over backwards like it's so fun to watch these vendors do anything they possibly can to make each wedding the best wedding it possibly can be it's really a self industry and it's really a beautiful thing to watch that yeah to make that day magical which is the ultimate Mm -hmm. goal for everyone involved well it's been so fun chatting with you Brittany um we're gonna do a fresh five really quick and get to know you a little bit better I'm gonna ask you some questions you can just say real quick what's on the top of your head are you ready I'm ready okay number one east coast or west coast Mm, west coast Harry Potter or Hunger Games (laughs) Harry Potter bird watching or stargazing stargazing Sweet or salty snacks? Salty every single time. <laughs> What's your go-to salty snack? Chips and salsa. Ah, oh, every time you do. I love it. You cannot go yeah. wrong. Okay, last one. What makes you smile? Sparkly things. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great answer. I love like it. Jewels or <laughs> anything that sparkles. Makes your eyes twinkle. I love it. Yep. Okay, Brittany, this has been so fun. Where can we go follow you and then also get more information on the wedding planning course? Yes. Okay. So you can go to our website at utahvalleybride.com. And in August, the wedding planning course will be live on the website. It'll just be in the menu bar and on the homepage. Perfect. And then uh, for people who want to follow, we we have an Instagram account, which is at utahvalleybride.com. At utahvalleybride.com easy Mm -hmm. as that. Brittany, it's been so fun. Thank you so much for joining us today. It's great to chat with you. Thank you. And thank you for listening to another episode of Fresh Off The Set. Please rate, review, and subscribe, and we will see you next week. Congrats, you made it to the end. If you want to continue to freshen up your day, you can watch us on Fresh Living every weekday on CBS Channel 2 in Utah at 1 o'clock. You can also watch us on our YouTube channel, KUTV Fresh Living, and follow us on social media. We will see you next week.